They are strange things, wiring lenses. The better and more expensive they are, the more they distort. This shot on the Panasonic 8 to 18 mm I'm reviewing here is focused at 2 meters. The center is sharp, and so are the edges, though the edges are nearly 3 meters away. Yet if I focus on something 2 meters away and put something a meter behind it, it's well out of focus. Wide angle lenses have to bend optical reality to make it look like human reality. It's a complex process, and that's why super wides are so expensive. The first one was the Zeiss Hologon 15mm, and I remember Zeiss lending me one back then in 1970. It was a new way of looking at the world, and my love for the exaggerated, unworldly look of the super wide has never gone. And now, here's a new one from Panasonic. Unlike the Zeiss, this one is a zoom covering a super wide 8mm to a general purpose 18mm. It reigns in cost and bulk by having a variable aperture f2.8 at 8mm to f4 at 18, with 12 and 14mm coming in at f3.5 for practical purposes. The lens feels heavyish in the hand, but actually at 315 grams or 11 ounces is similar to Panasonic 7 to 14mm f4 and much lighter than Olympus's 7-40mm f2.8 at over 530 grams. There's nothing fancy about it at all, a focusing ring, a zoom ring, and a switch for selecting manual or autofocus. There's a neat lens hood in the box too, as you'd expect. There's no stabilisation built in, and no big need for it at these focal lengths. The finish is very pleasing to the eye, a slightly powdery matte black that looks as svelte as it feels. The selling point for this lens is that it can take 67mm filters via a standard thread. It's the only MFT lens this wide that can do so, and it makes it stand out from the crowd. You want those surreal perspective, creamy long exposure waterfalls and streams? Or to shoot video at a 50th or 60th of a second in bright sunlight? Now you can. Just screw in a bog standard neutral density filter. That's a real crowd pleaser. It's not done with any radical lens design to stop the lens tromboning, or flatten the superwise typically bulbous front element. They just put the glass in a longer than necessary barrel and put a thread on the end. It's a simple solution to a complex problem, and like so many simple solutions, leaves you thinking, why didn't anybody else think of that? In use, the 8-18mm to focal length is highly practical. The more usual 7-14mm to to wide zooms are still noticeably wide angle at the longest 14mm end. And for me, that puts this Panasonic into a different category of use. While you lose 1mm at the short end, the extension to 18mm puts you in the area of a general purpose lens. The loss of angle from 7mm to 8mm is significant at these tiny focal lengths, and I'd prefer a 7 to 18mm. Nevertheless, 8mm is still a very wide angle, capable of rendering a highly pictorial, steep, sometimes surreal perspective. In terms of feel and handling, I've always preferred the feel of Olympus's Micro Four Thirds lenses, which despite being just as electronic as anyone else's, I've always felt like old school 70s nickels, with a metal body and silky smooth grease stamped helical focusing mechanism. This 8-18mm is the first Panasonic lens I've used that has that same Olympus feel, and very welcome it is. It certainly justifies its Leica Elmerit designation. Now the nitty gritty. Is it sharp? Yes it is. These shots tell the story. And, pleasingly as you can see, the sharpness is even right across the frame, as the left and right 100% pull up show. The sharpness is good enough that I'm happy to use it wide open at every focal length through the range. I've used it extensively, to tell the truth I could hardly put it down. And compared to its 7-40mm Panasonic sibling, I'd say centre sharpness was similar, while the edges were better. I have less experience with the Olympus 7-14mm, but from what I have, I'd say it is broadly similar. Flare is well controlled, as you can see from this shot, which has the sun shining directly into the lens, but only affecting the immediate area. The Panasonic 7-14 f4 had some problems with purple fringing, this 18-18mm doesn't. One thing I would mention is that the images from this lens have excellent contrast. It makes for pleasingly clean looking, finely detailed image quality, and it does make for ravishing landscapes. Autofocusing is class leading, as you'd expect from Panasonic. Manual focusing is fine, but given the short focal lengths, you'll need peaking or magnification for accuracy. 
Close focus is a useful 23 centimeters from the focal plane, but you won't be using this lens for macro shots due to the wide angle. But for flowers and the like, it acts like a good general purpose lens, as in this off the cuff portrait shot. This is an 18 millimeter and f4. You really wouldn't do this with a 7 to 14 millimeter zoom. No one uses a wide angle if they want shallow depth of field, of course. But as you can see here, it's out of focus enough to draw attention to my model Olga. So, what's to say about this latest Panasonic like a glass? Its name tells you it won't be cheap, and around a thousand pounds, or dollars, or twelve hundred euros, it isn't. It's about the same as Olympus's 7 to 14, which has a constant f2.8 aperture, but a lesser zoom range, a slightly wider angle, and can't double up as a general purpose lens. The Panasonic 7 to 14 ditto, but a constant f4, are considerably cheaper. There's also Olympus's 9 to 18 mm f4 to 5.6. It's certainly a cheap alternative, but it doesn't have the sharpness across the frame of the 8 to 18, the overall image quality, or the quality construction. And the step from 7mm to 9mm is a noticeable curtailment of angle of view. The price difference of the 9 to 18 and the 8 to 18 accurately reflects their relative merits, and underlines the wide choices Micro Four Third users have these days, both lenses representing value for money. It would be nice to have had stabilisation at this price, but none of its rivals do either, and most camera bodies do come with it these days. Panasonic already have the 12 to 60 f2.8 to 4, and they will use the f2.8 to 4 configuration with other lenses, I believe. Interestingly, the 12 to 60 felt like an all-round compromise on everything except construction. The 8 to 18 doesn't feel like a compromise at all. I think that's because it acts as two lenses in one, a super wide to 8 to 14 and then a general purpose range from 15 to 18. That's one of the reasons I like Olympus's 40 to 150 f2.8 so much. It's a general purpose to medium tele, with a nice long telephoto added on, two lenses in one. For a long time now, my serious working photography outfit has been 7 to 14, 12 to 40, and 40 to 150 zooms, plus converter. It's changed now to 8 to 18 zoom, 25mm f1.4 Panasonic Prime and 40 to 150 zoom plus converter. I bought this lens to review, but it hasn't been off my camera since I bought it, reviewing or not. Something has to go, and I'm sad to say it's my lovely Panasonic 7 to 14. Still, as they say, out with the old, in with the new. Just as long as they don't apply it to me. Thanks for watching.